So let's now talk about the layers of the epidermis. And we're going to begin with the stratum basale, which is the deepest epidermal layer or the deepest epidermal stratum. This layer is attached to the basement membrane by hemidesmosomes, therefore forming a strong bond between the epidermis and the underlying dermal layer. So if we look at this image over here, what I've done is I've illustrated the stratum basale, at least one of the cells found in this stratum or this layer. So here is our basement membrane, and this cell is anchored to the basement membrane. And if you remember, all epithelial tissue are anchored to the basement membrane via a hemidesmosome, which is what this is, all right? So I'm illustrating here a hemidesmosome, therefore allowing these layer of cells in the stratum basale to anchor itself to the basement membrane. Now, what we have is a single row or one cell layer of cuboidal or columnar keratinocytes. Now, what we usually see are cuboidal, which means they look like a square or a box-like cell, uh, but sometimes you may occasionally see them being tall, all right, or column shape. So once again, it's one cell layer, a single row of cuboidal or columnar keratinocytes. Now, this is where, if we look into the cytoplasm of the keratinocytes, we start to see scattered keratin intermediate filaments. The keratin is not yet its final form of keratin. So this layer happens to also be where these keratinocytes or keratinocytes begin dividing. All right? So I like to refer to the stratum basale as the dividing cell layer or the dividing layer of cells these keratinocytes or keratinocytes. And the way they divide is mitotically. In other words, they undergo mitosis. So from one cell, we end up with two identical cells as what mitosis is, right? And the reason why this has to occur is because we are constantly shedding skin. So every time we rub up against something or we put our clothing on or take our clothing off, we are shedding skin. We just are not aware of it. So there has to be backup, right? There has to be new cells to replenish the cells that is lost. And the only way this is possible is by having the stratum basale, the cells that are found in this layer, to continuously mitotically divide. Now, the cells are going to be referred to as basale or germinative cells. So we're going to refer to these dividing keratinocytes or keratinocytes as basale or germinative cells. So what I've illustrated over here is essentially mitosis. So we're just going to quickly go through mitosis without obviously going through the stages of mitosis. You've already learned that. So here we have a dividing cell. And this black line that I illustrated, just to make sure you understand what I'm drawing, this right here is the basement membrane. So I'm just going to abbreviate basement membrane as BM. A basement membrane. So from one cell, we end up with two cells. So the reason why I illustrated it this way is just to show that we can have mitosis uh, occur in a horizontal way. Now, it can also occur in a vertical way, which is what's illustrated just directly beneath it. So once again, here's the basement membrane, just so uh, when you're watching this video, this thing makes sense. All right, so what this is showing is essentially vertical mitotic division. So from one cell, we end up with two cells. Now, if you recall, we have a parental and we have a daughter cell. The parental is the older cell, so to speak, and the daughter is the so-called newer cell. So what happens here with vertical mitotic division, each and every time these keratinocytes or keratinocytes, these basale cells divide, the older cell gets pushed up. Right? So they're literally going to move on to the next layer, superficial to the stratum basale, which is the stratum spinosum. So in other words, what drives the movement up, eventually getting to the most superficial stratum, which is the stratum corneum, is the subsequent division that occurs in the stratum basale. Right? So basically, with each mitosis, the older keratinocytes are consistently being pushed up. Now, what happens if mitosis stops? And then there is no longer this vertical movement of cells, right? Meaning that it's moving up towards the stratum corneum. And then eventually, we're going to lose the epidermis if these layer of cells found in the stratum basale stop mitotically dividing. And obviously, that cannot happen. Now, the mitotic division or mitosis occurs throughout life, right? So it's just that the rate of mitosis starts to diminish as we get older. So the younger our epidermis, the faster the turnaround. That means the quicker the mitotic division. As we start to age, the mitosis starts to slow down. 
Now, does it ever stop? No, it doesn't. All right, it just slows down. So let's look at this horizontal and vertical uh, way of dividing or division uh, with this illustration that I drew just beneath it. All right, just so we're clear on what we're drawing here, here's the basement membrane, okay? And we know that the stratum basale, this single layer or single row of cuboidal keratinocytes or keratinocytes is anchored to this basement membrane. And in our previous discussion, we mentioned that the mound is the dermal papillae, right? So I'm highlighting two mounds, so they're two mounds, therefore dermal papillae. And the ridge is the epidermal ridge. All right, so what happens is the single row of keratinocytes or keratinocytes in the stratum basale, they start dividing horizontally. And that occurs along the dermal papilla. I'm just gonna highlight it, let, let's use yellow. All right, so we're gonna highlight these cells and they're moving in a, they're dividing, I should say, in a horizontal way, all right? So they're getting pushed towards the epidermal ridge. Once it gets to the epidermal ridge, this is now where we start to see vertical movement, vertical mitotic division. And this is why I have an arrow pointing up. Okay, so once it gets to the epidermal ridge, then these layer of cells, and I'll use green this time, right? these layers of cells will now start dividing mitotically, of course, in a vertical way. And so now the older parental keratinocytes are getting pushed up. Okay, so they're continuously getting pushed up until they get to the stratum. Cornea. So the bottom line is the more superficial the stratum, the layer of cells in a given stratum, the more superficial, the older these keratinocytes or keratinocytes are. Okay, now the deeper we go, then the younger the cells. I hope that makes sense, okay, because again, with each subsequent mitotic division, the older keratinocytes or keratinocytes are getting pushed towards the superficial stratum. So we have this condition, it's a sad condition called epidermolysis bullosa, commonly known as touch me not. So what happens here, this genetic disease results in the skin being extremely fragile. And the reason being is because the inability of the cells that make up the stratum basale cannot anchor to the underlying basement membrane. So that's often due to either a defective hemidesmosome or a de desmosome that is not there are basically lacking hemidesmosomes. So there is no way to anchor the epidermis to the underlying basement membrane. And of course, directly deep to that is the dermis. So literally what happens is the epidermis peels right off, which can be seen in this image over here. So this is an image of an infant's leg. And you can see that the epidermis is literally peeling off. All right, so this basically is because once again, the stratum basale cannot effectively anchor to the basement membrane. There's nothing holding the epidermis to the basement membrane and, of course, the dermis. As a result, the skin is extremely fragile and painful blisters begin to form. And if left untreated, it can become infected. I mean, you can clearly see when the epidermis is no longer there or it's been peeled away, what we're looking at is now the underlying dermis. So now, our integument is subjected to all sorts of stuff, right? There, we've, we've lost the epidermis as a barrier. So this condition is extremely painful. Yes, we know that the epidermis is avascular, but you're going to see that it's loaded with sensory nerve endings. So it's an excruciating disease. A blister, incidentally, for those of you all who've ever worn uh, a, new sh a new pair of shoes, when you're breaking in your shoes, you start to form a blister, okay? So what happens there is that area of the skin specifically the stratum basale, has peeled away off of the basement membrane. And therefore, water accumulates between the epidermis and the dermis. So imagine that in a much larger scale is what we have here with this particular genetic disease. So it can range in severity. So some individuals may have a mild form where they form fewer blisters or not very many blisters, while others may have blisters in a greater area of their skin. Sometimes it can be so severe that wherever we have uh, epithelial tissue, and of course, as I said, all epithelial tissue are anchored to the basement membrane via hemidesmosomes, it peels away. So this can occur in the mouth, it can occur in the stomach, the throat, the esophagus, and everywhere else. So I can't even begin to imagine how painful this condition is. And there is no cure for epidermolysis bullosa, again, commonly known as touch-me-not.
So before we move on to the more superficial stratum spinosum, let's look at some of the specialized cells that we find in the strata base saline. So we begin by looking at the Merkel cells, which also is referred to as a tactile epithelial cell or tactile cell. So we find these mostly in the stratum base saline. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight them in green. So we find them predominantly in the stratum base saline. And they are associated with the Merkel disc. So the Merkel disc is also referred to as the tactile disc. Just to make sure that we're all on the same page, please note the Merkel disc, tactile disc, is a neuron. All right? And of course, the Merkel cell is an epithelial cell, but they're unlike the keratinocytes or the keratinocytes. They do not produce keratin. What they do, these Merkel cell and Merkel disc, which are together, they're bundled together as a package, so to speak, is they respond to light touch and superficial pressure. Furthermore, these Merkel cells are the least numerous of all cells found in the epidermis. The next type of specialized cells that we find in the stratum basale is the melanocytes. So these melanocytes are pigment producing cells. Compared to the size of the keratinocytes, these melanocytes are massive, right? So they're quite large cells. Furthermore, if we look carefully at the structure, they have these cytoplasmic extensions that I highlighted in green, or cytoplasmic processes that can reach up into the stratum granulosum. So they sort of look like an octopus with these many tentacles or cytoplasmic extensions that reach into the more superficial strata. All right, so the melanin, which they produce, is the major pigment that is responsible for skin coloration, hair coloration, and eye coloration. Now, it turns out that we have two forms of melanin. So let's go ahead and write that out. So we'll look at the two types or two forms of this pigment, melanin, which, by the way, is a protein, all right? It's a protein pigment. So the first type is eumelanin. So eumelanin is the darker shade of melanin or the darker hue. So this tends to be brown black form of melanin. And the lighter shade or the lighter hue of melanin is pheomelanin. So pheomelanin is more of the yellow brown hue. So if your melanocytes produces more of the eumelanin, then the darker the pigmentation. If the melanocytes produces more of the pheomelanin, then the lighter the skin pigmentation or pigmentation. Now, please note, regardless of your race, we all have the same number of melanocytes. It's just that the activity of the melanocytes will vary. So the more active the melanocytes, then the more pigment is produced and also as well as the type of melanin they produce. So just as I said, if they're producing more of the pheomelanin versus the eumelanin, then the lighter the skin pigmentation, for example. Now what the melanocytes will do is they're gonna package this melanin, right, these pigment proteins, into what we call melanosomes. So you can think of melanosome as a box, and inside that box are these melanin, all right, these pigment proteins. And what will then happen is the melanocytes will exocytose it and basically say, okay, here you go, keratinocytes, take it up, all right? So what the uh, keratinocytes will do is they'll endocytose it. They'll take it in and open that box. So they open the melanosomes and voila, inside are the melanin pigment proteins. So what's really cool about them, especially when you expose your skin to the damaging effects of sun, ultraviolet light, and you're not wearing adequate protection, such as sunscreen, these melanin pigments will literally shield the nucleus of the keratinocytes. So let me go ahead and put nucleus here. So we're looking at the nucleus of a keratinocyte. And if you remember, inside the nucleus, of course, we have our DNA. So these melanin pigments literally, like an umbrella, will go over the nucleus and shielding that DNA to basically minimize the damaging effects of ultraviolet light with sun exposure. So is it fail-proof? No, it isn't, because we know skin cancer does exist, but it's better than nothing. So the more melanin that we have and the darker form of melanin, the greater the protection it offers against the damaging effects of the sun, ultraviolet light.
So this particular just slot. So this particular slide just shows us the uh, melanocyte and how it packages the uh, melanin pigments into the melanosomes. And then from there, the keratinocytes or keratinocytes will then uptake the uh, package, the melanosomes, and then we'll proceed to open them, therefore releasing them into the cytoplasm of the keratinocytes or keratinocytes. So I like this image over here because you could see how, if we look at the stratum basale, it's heavily pigmented, right? So that is because, again, of the uh, melanocytes producing the pigment melanin.